Hello and welcome to another tutorial for ArtRage 4. Uh, this is going to be a demonstration on how I apply texture with the watercolor tool. Uh, someone over at the ArtRage forums saw a picture I made uh, and wanted to know a little more detail about the method. So uh, hopefully this tutorial is going to cover any questions he may have. Uh, or any of you. So if you do have any extra questions after watching the video, uh, feel free to post them here or at the Outreach forums and I'll try to answer those directly. Okay, uh, before we begin, uh, while most of the items I'm going to be dealing with in terms of texture are going to be default within Outreach, there is going to be one for the canvas uh, that is one of the ones I made. So. Uh, if you're going to follow along, uh, you know, using everything specifically, you're going to want to go to the website, the link of which is going to be in the description of this video. Uh, go down to the bottom of the ArtRage form, and you'll find this image that I uploaded. You just want to right-click on that and select Save Image As and save it to your computer. And then we're going to go back into ArtRage. We're going to go to View, and we're going to select Canvas Settings. That opens our Canvas Setting panel. Uh, down here towards the bottom, you'll see it says Grain. You just click on that, select Load from Disk, and then you can select that image and open it with an Art Rage as a Canvas Grain. Okay, with that selected, I'm going to increase the grain size to about 200%. All right. And the roughness we're going to play with, okay? So if I turn the canvas lighting on, you can see the grain on the canvas. Uh, and it goes from very low to high, depending on where I move that slider at the bottom. And that actually affects how the watercolor tool reacts to the canvas. So if I select that watercolor tool and open the settings panel, uh, I'm going to set it to the uh, default settings here. Make sure I'm using a bright color. Uh, if I make a mark on my canvas and then increase the roughness of that layer, you can see how I get a more sparse effect. Okay, so that texture ends up breaking up the paint a lot more the more rough it gets. And if I put it lower, it gets smooth again. Now, if I open the layer panel and use the layer menu to open up the edit layer texture panel, you can get those same effects by uh, using individual layer textures. Uh, but I don't prefer to do that because you can't change that uh, texture on the fly. Okay, so if, as long as that panel's open, I can't do anything else on the canvas. All right, so that's why I prefer to do it with the canvas settings. Um, so just make sure that you always have use canvas texture for each of the layers selected. All right, usually that's set by default, but uh, you may have to change it if you end up messing around with this and realize you know that's not actually affecting anything. Uh, so. For now, we're going to go ahead and clear that canvas, now that I've showed you that. Uh, I'm going to show you the next part, which is adding an overlay texture. Um, you know what, I'm going to undo, I'm going to keep that color there so that you can see it. Um, what I'm going to do is add a new layer, and I'm going to select the fill tool. I'm going to make sure, okay, see I was already off of default. I'm going to make sure though that I'm using pattern. Okay, so this is going to be a pattern fill. And where it says blobs here, you're going to click that little gray arrow there and select from collection. And under the decorative group, locate concrete and select OK. Uh, I'm going to click on the lock scale option and I'm going to set the scale to 100%. And I'm just going to tap on my screen, and you can see that filled the screen with that texture. Now if I go to the menu for the uh, layer over here, and select Blend Mode, Overlay, you can see that that texture was applied to 
the color beneath it. So anything I color on that layer beneath is now going to have that grainy texture of that concrete on there. Okay, you see that? Now it doesn't affect how the stroke is created. It just gives the illusion of having an extra grain over it. Okay, so uh, you know, the changing the roughness here isn't going to change how that affects the stroke in any way. It just changes the uh, perception of how smooth it is on top. Now, I'm going to decrease that a little bit and show you that uh, if you create another layer and well, I'm going to go ahead and use the fill tool again first. I'm going to select a different grain from the collection. Okay, and again this is in the decorative group. I'm also going to use the rough tan paper. Alright. Uh, and this time I'm going to go to edit adjust layer colors because this has it's a it's you know it's colored brown uh, it's not as grayscale as that last one so I'm going to bring that color uh, slider down to a negative 100 to get rid of the color and now I'm going to go to the menu for the layer and I'm going to set the blend mode for that to overlay again and that's going to give us just a little extra texture to that. Okay, so it's giving you a little bit more to see. Uh, but it's a little light. So what we can do is go to Edit, Adjust Layer Colors again, and play around with the contrast. So I'm going to change the uh, brightness to a little lower. Play around with the contrast a bit just to see what I can get here and I kinda like where that's at there I can always change the opacity later to affect that difference there okay so that's giving us a little extra uh, green on top of the texturing that we're gonna get okay so I'm pretty much set with what I wanna uh, use to make this painting and the colors you use, you can just go ahead and grab anything. Uh, but what I'm going to use is a dark blue to start in the upper corner. I'm going to increase the, th uh, rather decrease the thinners to zero, so that that's going to be as dark as I can get. Uh, and you can see I, everything else is default right now for the uh, watercolor uh, watercolor tool here. I'm going to select the light bluer color and I'm just going to drag that in there a little bit and now that I have that down I'm going to increase the roughness of the uh, canvas grain just kind of drag into that to get some extra effects going okay and you can see how that's now breaking up without having any white in there so that's why I mix them first before increasing the roughness of that color Okay. and by holding alt and tapping in here I'm gonna pick up that uh, more of a grayer tone that I, I made when I blended them I'm just gonna use that further down here and again I just picked up more of that darker blue I'm gonna bring that further over because I want to go a little bit further down I'm going to increase that roughness again, drag that color around a little, oh, maybe that's a little too much, yeah that's better. Alright, you can see how I'm constantly shifting that roughness to get the effects I want. And for those people who know traditional painting, this is kind of like stopping to add salt or use a sponge. Okay, you always you're constantly going back and forth between tools. So 
try to keep that in mind when you're using Art Rage. You know, this is designed to mimic traditional painting in some ways, uh, and it doesn't always match it specifically, but that mindset should still be there where, you know, don't think that, oh, I can use one tool and one tool alone to, to get the effects I want. You know, if you're just going to limit yourself by doing that. So try to explore everything a little bit and kind of go with the flow. Okay, so I want to have a little more texture in here. So what I can do is I can either select that darker tone again from up here and kind of... I'm going to decrease the color bleed. What color bleed does, it affects how the color drags when you add it. And you can see how it, it kind of bleeds that in a little bit. I'm just going to use that and lightly tap and drag my uh, stylus around to add that in there. I just want a little more texture here and there. And I suppose I should know I'm using a Wacom Intuos for this. Uh, there's other tablets you could be using, but that's just the one I'm using. Uh, and just so that you know, I am using a tablet. Because some people might be thinking I'm using a mouse, and that wouldn't be good because you wouldn't be getting the same effects, probably. Alright. So, there I go. I've added some extra textures in there. And uh, I'm pretty happy with the effects I'm getting.